Hey everyone, it's Guilherme and in this video we're gonna see how we can use the previously loaded dialog JSON into a dialog box. This is the second part of the series so if you haven't watched it yet please watch the first one and again this is the approach that we are using in the open source RPG demo. Now when I say dialog box what I'm referring to is this box that you see whenever you start a dialog in the RPG demo which means both this box that has the text the name of the character that is currently speaking and also the button on the right top corner and also the portrait of the character. The scene responsible for the dialogs box is the dialog box scene and I'm gonna go to the 2D view. As you can see the scene is made up by the portrait of the character and also a panel that holds the name of that character, the text that he is currently saying and also two buttons, one that is responsible to go to the next phrase of the dialogue and one which is responsible to end the dialogue. Besides the nodes responsible for the UI of our scene, we also have a dialogue player which provides the data to our dialogue box. Now let's open the script for the dialogue box. We first have a signal that is emitted whenever this dialogue has ended and then we take references to some of our nodes that we have in our scene. In the start function, we received the parse dialog, which is now a dictionary. Hide the button to finish the dialog in case it's being shown. Show the button to go to the next phrase. Grab focus on that button because we want to have keyboard support in our dialogs. And we start our dialog player by passing to it the dialog dictionary. We then update the content and show ourselves in the screen. Before going further, what you have to keep in mind is that all of this functionality of the dialog box relies on the interaction of the dialog box itself, which is responsible to display the data, and the dialog player, which provides the correct data to be displayed from the dictionary. Now, whenever we press the next button in our dialog box, we are going to call the next function in our dialog player and update our content. The next function is connected to the finish signal of our dialog player, and whenever this signal is emitted, we hide the next button, grab focus on our button finished which is responsible to finish our dialog and show it to our player. And when we press the finish button we emit a signal saying that this dialog has ended and we hide ourselves. In the update content function we are going to reach out to our dialog player and grab its data to show in our control nodes. The first thing we do is get the name of the character that is currently speaking and we update the name label. We then update the text label with the text that is currently being spoken by our character and we then update our portrait's texture by reaching out to a dialog database and getting the correct texture. We are going to take a look in the dialog database in a bit but just keep in mind that we are passing to the get texture function the name of the character that we want to get the portrait and also the expression that is currently being used. I'll now open the dialog player script. First, we have a signal that is emitted when we hit the end of this conversation. We then have three variables, which are the title, text, and the expression. If you remember correctly, these are the data needed in the dialog box. We then have an array, which holds the conversation, and a current index, which holds the index of the last accessed line of our conversation. In the start function, we receive the dialog dictionary, and we grab its values and stores a reference to them in our conversation array. We then ensure that our current index is at zero, so we start from the start of our conversation and we call the update function. The next function, if you remember correctly, was being called from the dialog box whenever the next button was pressed. So here we increase our index, we then make sure that this index is lesser or equal to the size of our conversation array and we call the update function once again. Now in the update function, we fetch the values from our conversation using the current index. So we set our text to be equal to the text that we have inside of our conversation array with the index of current index, the same for the title and the same for the expression. And finally, we check if our current index is equal to the size of our conversation minus one, because remember arrays start at zero. And if that's the case, we emit the signal finished let our dialog box know that we have hit the end of our dialog and we can hide the next button and show the button to finish the conversation. The last part in our dialog box puzzle is the dialog database. So I'm gonna open the dialog database script. This is an auto-loaded script 
that, as you saw before, is used inside of our dialog box to get the correct portraits of our characters. The source directory constant holds the path to our dialog characters folder, and we then have a dictionary of characters. We are not going to go into much detail in our ready function since file manipulation isn't the goal of this video, but in sum, what we're doing here is checking if this directory really exists. We then loop through all of the resource files that we have inside of that directory and we load them inside of our character's dictionary. Also, keep in mind that the keys of our dictionary are the names of our files and the files are saved with the name of our characters. If we go to this folder, we're going to be able to see the structure of these resource files. So I'm going to go to the file system tab and here you can see that inside of our dialog we have the characters folder and inside of this folder, we have two resource files, one for Godaddy and one for Roby. So I'm gonna open up Godaddy resource file. Here we can see that we have a backstory to her and also a dictionary of expressions. If I expand this dictionary, you can see that we have another dictionary which has as a key the expression. In this case, we only have one which is neutral and as a value, the texture that represents that expression in that character. Now that we know how these resource files are structured, we can go back to our dialog database script and take a look in our get texture function. As parameters to this function, we receive the name of the character that we want to look for a portrait and also what expression we want to grab. We then check if we have a character with this name inside of our character's dictionary and also if we do have an expression that we're looking for. If both of these expressions are true, and here I say expression as a logical expression, we are going to return the value inside of our expressions dictionary with the key of expression from the character inside of our character's dictionary. And in sum, all of what this getTexture function is doing is reaching into our character's dictionary and looking for the correct expression texture. With this, everything that we needed for a conversation system is in place, and we can now display our portraits with different expressions and also easily set up different conversations for our characters. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can find the complete project in the GitHub repository. And I'll see you in the next one.